How many times have you wished you could go for an early retirement and start living it up in your 30s and 40s? Sounds so much better than wasting your prime years doing 9 to 5s, right? Now, how many times did your paycheck add up with that plan? Well, believe us when we say this, it's not impossible. Let's explore some of the different things you could do to achieve fire or financial independence retire early with a low income level. Before we continue, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to Hustling for Freedom, and hit the bell icon for notifications. Let's begin. Start early. If you want to retire early, and you decide it's going to be a smart idea to just aim for a job when you finish college. You already decided to waste a bunch of years where you could have been making money moves on the side. Saving up and more importantly, selling your skill set. Your time is worth money, don't waste it. Start to develop a mindset for money as soon as possible and think about how you should allocate your time to fit that mindset. You could do lots of different things to earn money, since we literally live in the age of possibilities. So, let's get into what you can actually do to achieve FIRE. Step 1. Evaluate your monthly income and expenses. The first step to make sure your early retirement plans are set is an in-depth evaluation of your living style and expenses at present. Start by subtracting your fixed and variable monthly expenses from your income. Your fixed expenses include your car insurance, credit cards, gym membership, utility bills, rent-slash-mortgage, student loans etc. Basically anything that is the same amount each month. Your variable expenses are your not-so-regular costs for example birthday gifts, money spent on hair, clothes etc., dining out, vacation etc. Now add up your annual expenses and subtract it from your annual income. This should give you an idea of your expenses and spending habits. Now what you need to do next is manage your spending. Step 2. Identify expenses to cut back on. After an in-depth analysis of where you spend your money, it's time to cut back on some of those extra expenses to save for rainy days or your early retirement. Where to cut back your spending differs from individual to individual. Here are some suggestions to consider. If your rent is eating up most of your annual income consider downsizing to a place with lower rent. This will help you save up money for a home. Is your monthly car payment adding a big dent in your income? Try opting for public transportation instead and save up that extra money until you can pay for a commuter car in full. Limit your dining out expenses. Start meal prepping to save the daily costs of ordering out. These might seem like small changes, but these changes add up significantly, and the results will show themselves in the form of a sweet early retirement. Step 3. Invest your savings. Financial investments are the best way to make your savings make more savings which they do just by sitting in someone else's pocket for a while. There's been a lot of innovation in financial markets in recent years since nowadays, most trading is done online on stock indexes or through cryptocurrencies. For those of you who don't know, stocks are shares of companies that they allow the public to buy so that they're partially owner to the company and can earn a share of profits for investing their money, while cryptocurrencies are virtual money that have an unregulated market just for themselves. The values for these investments change over time as the value of whatever you're investing in, company or crypto changes. This could go up, down sideways or in circles, no one can ever really be sure, they can predict, but that just depends on what information you have. Let's shine some light on what information you should look at. Crypto is pretty unpredictable but stocks are less so. Companies make something called an annual report, which tells you how big an operation they ran that year. Trading websites usually list this information on the page for that particular company's stock. That information will show you price trends over the years. So you can easily figure out which one is going to turn your $5,000 investment at 21 into $4 million at 45. Some conventional ways of investing are still preferred by people who aren't looking for the risk that comes with investing in stocks or crypto. They opt for investments like bonds and treasury bills, but the returns just aren't as big as what you're looking for. Step 4. How to build savings. So, we talked about investing your savings, but we never actually mentioned how to get those savings in the first place. If you spend all $7,000 of your paycheck, you're not going to have anything left over to actually invest. So, here's some tips on what you can do about that. First things first, name brands really aren't that big a deal. They cost more, provide the same level of function as some good generic brands, and really don't impress anybody past high school. No one is going to care that your shirt doesn't have a logo on it. If they do, run the other way, you're probably better off that way. Secondly, consider moving back in with your parents. I know, I know, the idea is financial independence, and this sounds more like we're going backwards. 
It's not the most lavish experience, but paying rent or mortgages isn't for those that need to boost finances fast. Real estate and utilities in general consume a pretty massive part of your paycheck, if you look at it. Step 5. Reevaluating your health insurance plan. What most people forget about while planning for an early retirement is their health insurance. Early retirement means you'll be bidding farewell to your employer plan health insurance. You need a plan for when you plan on retiring till the time Medicare kicks in. The most cost-effective option would be to hop on your spouse's employer plan. Another option is signing up for COBRA which allows you to continue your last employer's health plan. Step 6. Consider a side gig. A side hustle is something you do separately from the main job that's earning most of your income. This could be anything from making punk rock t-shirts and selling them from home, or freelance writing. You need something to do with your free time that will convert at least some of it into money. This is actually also a good way to stop yourself from spending money. Just be so busy that you don't have time to spend it. You might have asked yourself, why is it so important to have a side hustle in the first place? Good question, here's why. Your main paycheck is for covering what you need, your side paycheck is to manage the monstrosity we call debts. 340 million people in the US are in debt a total of $14,600,000,000. That's about $43,000 per person on average, of course the actual distribution is much different with some people being way more in debt than others. That's because a lot of the ones with less debt were smart and decided to use the bonus money from their side hustles to pay off their debts with the biggest interest rates before they matured too much. Debts paid off early feel much lighter than debts paid off late. Don't know what side hustle to start? Have a look in the description there you can find my favorite ones. One of them makes me $100 a day almost completely passive. If you want me to make a YouTube video about it let me know in the comments. I would love to help you make money on the side. Now let's go back to the video. Step 7. Take advantage of benefits only offered to people in lower income brackets. What you thought was your biggest curse could actually be your biggest strength. Your low income may not make ends meet that well, but what it also means is that you have to pay or lower income taxes and are entitled to certain benefits as well. For those of you that don't know how taxes work, your income is taxed according to tax brackets where higher income brackets get taxed at a higher percentage of their income. This makes wealth a little more evenly distributed, which is good for everyone. What's good for you is that if your income is low enough not only do you have to pay a lower percentage of your income as tax, but you can also take advantage of several programs the government has specifically for people with low income and, therefore, low credit scores. These programs help you out in different ways like helping you buy a house with a lower mortgage interest rate than everyone else is charged at. The lower middle class are not as helpless as they might think in this economy. Whatever you do, make sure to plan ahead, save and invest. The three pillars of financial security. Sacrifice your today for a better tomorrow and keep reminding yourself what you're doing this all for, an early retirement. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe. Tell us in the comments what you thought of this video and what ways you would suggest from your own personal experiences on how to get to fire on a low income. See you next time.